Shalom, saints, we are together again, starting the seven churches as we are about to start the book of Revelation chapter by chapter. As I had visited in those areas in Turkey, we took um, Ephesus, Smyrna, um, Pergamos, today we are taking Thyatira. These were churches that were there with characteristics that were prophetic of future ages. So as much as there were churches or people were there in the places with the churches with names that were prophetic and characteristic that were prophetic. As we examine each, we'll see that it coincides with an edge that was there in this Christian era. The attire coincides with the dark edges. So we go straight to the to John at the Isle of Patmos when he was persecuted for the word of God. They boiled him in a drum of oil for 24 hours, but greater is he that was within him. He overcame all persecution and he saw visions of heaven and the visions of the future unfolding. He was told that what you see, write in a book and send to the seven churches which are in Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey. When I went there to the agency, as it is in this video, I, I wanted to see the Isle of Patmos, which is a Greek uh, island. So I was in, in this uh, Kudasi palace. So seeing the Isle of Patmos from afar, because the boat cruises to the Isle of Patmos were shut because of the pandemic. But you could see from afar the Isle of Patmos um, just near where John was by the agency. So these seven places are arranged in a clockwise way from, uh, from the agency. These seven edges will be zooming on to, to the Atira. But he wrote the messages to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, the Atira, um, Sardis, Philadelphia, and the last one, which is the seven that we are living in, that is Laodicea. So, just to recap, last time I was showing you when I was in Ephesus, um, the nice ancient structures there, uh, how Paul preached in this place, just behind that library, there's the Aquara, the marketplace where Paul preached. It's nice to put your feet where the apostles trod. Then yesterday we were showing in Pergamos, this is the Acropolis, when we had visited the Acropolis in Pergamos, a very high place, about 400 meters above the ground, where the kings of Pergamos ruled, when Pergamos was Satan's seat and Paganism was ruling from there. Today we get straight to uh, the Atira, which means continual sacrifice. It also means dominating female. So a female in the Bible represents the church. So here we are just arriving at the Atira. Uh, the, these are the excavations of the ancient city of the Atira, the columns, the pillars, the structures that are remaining now. It's good that God kept these structures as an evidence that the scriptures are true and that the Bible, what is written, is true. We know that in the Bible, in Acts chapter 16, verse 14, um, Lydia, a seller of purple, uh, worshipped God and opened the Lord opened her heart to give heed to these things that were spoken by Paul. So she was from the Atira. City of the Atira. Lydia, the seller of purple, was in this city. We are about to go to the to see the ruins, the remains of the ancient Theatira. Entering wow. the ruins of the ancient city of Theatira, right in the midst here. These are the ruins of the ancient city of the Atira and the excavations, the pillars preserved in the midst of town. Lady at the cell of paper was from this place. So here it is. The Atira edge was representing the dark edges at the time of the dark ages time of the black horse that woman Jezebel this is the ruins of the ancient city of Theatira excavations are still going on and uh, let's see what we can find Right, auditorium of some sort. 
area is enter here and see. We see in Revelation chapter uh, 2 verse 18 says unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write these things say the son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like brass so as flame of fire is, is seeing in the darkness of this dark age I know your works and your charity and your service and your faith and your patience and thy works the last to be more than the first the more they were persecuted they, they increased their works they increased their patience unlike the Ephesian age where the, they lost their first love, but these ones increased. The last was more than the first. Uh, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because you suffer that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed to idols. So the complaint of God was the woman Jezebel. That was the dominating female of Thyatira. So this is the edge where the seed fell into the ground. When Christians were persecuted in dark ages and Bibles were bent, uh, it was like the the corn, the grain of corn was planted in the ground, started germinating again in Lutheran movement in Satis, then Western movement in Philadelphia, and then the Pentecostal movement in Laodicea first part, and then it is restored fully in the bright edge in this time that we are living under the Elijah ministry. So the dark edges coincide to the third seal of the black horse rider, the color of the horse being black. That was the time when the, the woman Jezebel, when the Catholic Church, was taking over uh, materially and uh, charging for novenas and uh, uh, the, the, the pay of balance is a measure of wheat for, for a penny. And they actually amassed a lot of wealth that was spiritual famine to the church at that time. And um, that, that is the third seal. When the third seal was opened, there was famine. And the Black Horse Rider, that was in the time of the Italian age, in the time of the Dark Ages, the move of the Antichrist through the woman Jezebel or the maneuvers of the Catholic system at that time. The, in the Atira, in the midst of the city, we have the preserved the ruins of the ancient city of the Atira, the pillar there, just in the midst of the city. We know that Lydia, the cell of Temple, was from this place of uh, the Atira, which means continual sacrifice, it also means dominating female, because in the Bible you find that woman Jezebel would teach her and say, it causes people to take things uh, sacrifice to idols. You know, the worship in this place uh, was Apollo, the sun god, who was second only to his father Zeus, who was, he was known as the avatar of evil, so there was idolatry. Also showing the future church, the, the dominating female, the woman that will control other churches, Mystery Babylon, that will also worship the sun somehow, uh, sun god. So it also means continual sacrifice because the Atarian According to the Bible, the more they were set, uh, persecuted, the more they persevered. They were the victim of the cop. The Bible says, um, unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, this thing said the Son of God, who has the eyes like flame of fire and uh, his feet like fine brass. So he passed through the persecution for us. Maybe let's go that side and see the pillars. Right, this is, um, says, his eyes like a flame of fire. Many even in the dark edges, in the darkness of our life, he sees. Now he escapes him, he sees your pains. He says, I know your works in every age, actually. He says, I know your works. He knows their tribulation, he knows their sacrifice, he knows what they are passing through. So worship the God who knows everything about us, he knows the number of your hair, he knows what you are passing through, and in his sorrow, he bears a part that none can bear below. So the Theatrian age was from um, 606 to 1520. So it becomes the longest edge. And let's move and see the nice pillars. That chance. Um, all the way going this way. Then you can zoom into the structure. It's not with all the seven churches. But it was known for pottery and uh, dyeing where, you know, the Bible says Lydia, the seller of people don't die. Well, so it was the, this northwest uh, of the places, it's located in Mysia of uh, Ionia. So, the Bible says,
These things say the Son of God. He's now not revealing himself as the Son of Man, but the Son of God. So, he is this, we don't know him now after the flesh. He's now the Spirit of God. So, he that is a fear, he is what the Spirit says to the church. We'll go through this baptize now and see what is here. Now, this age, the evil that there was Jezebel's spirit, that woman Jezebel, actually they had gone to the depths of Satan in idolatry. So the depths of Satan, we as Christians go to the depths of God, but these people were deep in paganism uh, and Jezebelism, mystery Babylon, the woman who, who teaches idolatry. He says, I'll cast the children into a bed, those that commit fornications with there, I'll, I'll kill their children with death. So this is the age also of, of where millions of Christians were killed uh, in Inquisition. Uh, those who denied the power of the enemy, they were persecuted. But the Christians stood in long age of persecution, but they came out to be fired as gold. And the seed fell into the ground and germinated now in Reformation, in, in uh, Luther, in Wesley, and then finally in the full wet in the last age. So it was this seed falling into the ground, then it starts now as the stock, the tassel, finally the wheat is back again. So that woman, Jezebel, was the Catholic Church taking over in the time of the, the Italian age. That's the black horse. I'll go through this door here. <laughs> and see what is inside. <laughs> it reminds you of the prophet Ezekiel when he was told, dig in the wall. He started seeing people sacrificing the Tammuz and what. That was the religion of the NM because this, these are Apollos and what. It's still the same Nimrod system, Tammuz systems. So here are the ruins, beautiful structures remaining. But he that overcome in the Atara shall rule the nations the rod of iron, meaning that in the millennium we will rule with Christ for a thousand years. I will give him the morning star. Christ is the morning star. Every gift of Christ is himself giving himself to the church. So, there is always an overcomer in every age. In every age he says, I know your works. Meaning Christ knows everything about us, knows what we are passing through and the he knows how to fight for us. He is the Son of God. He is everything to us. So the overcomers reward is given to the church in their time. So let's see the place and enjoy the nice ruins there. So the, the message to this age was Columba. Columba was from Ionia there. Um, he actually stood for Christianity. At one time, we went to a barren island. Maybe just move that side. Barren island, and by faith, one hand he was planting, another one was praying, and the place was transformed to a beautiful place. At one time, when we wanted to have access to his souls in a certain place, because our business is winning his souls, they shot him, and when he tried to pray, magicians were making noise to drown him, his voice. But he, the angel of God amplified this voice and it was above there and the gates of the city opened in their own accord and the one souls in that place. All messengers believed in the supernatural, they believed in the power of God and the same Holy Spirit that was in the days of Paul, in the days of uh, Irenaeus, the same power continued because the power was to bend continually, it continued in all the ages. Let's go in and see what is inside. Edge. Jesus was walking in the midst of the candlesticks. No one should complain that uh, if I lived in the edge of all, in every edge, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We are back to this place again. This is wonderful preserved things. He that overcomes. So there is an overcomer, there is an incentive in every age to overcome. Amen. Zero remaining. You know, they were known for portal and for food, uh, art of dying things. It's nice things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay.
Tia Tyra. The remainings of Tia Tyra. So here we are when we got to Theatira. Historically, the city of Theatira was the least noteworthy of the seven cities of Revelation. It is situated in the confines of Mysia or Ionia, uh, surrounded by many rivers and full of leeches. Commended uh, feature was it was well financially. So this is the city of Theatira. And one of the reasons why the spirit chose this city, it already contains spiritual elements of the fourth age. Because of his religion, the, the, there was the worship of Apollo. Apollo was the sun god, next in power to Zeus and known as the avatar of evil. So that the temple of the god, is, of, the god of uh, Zeus who was the sun god. And when we got to the Atira here, um, I wanted to notice that as much as these are symbolic to the edge, but each individual also passes through their own church edges. They are somewhere at Ephesus, they have lost their first love. They are somewhere at Smyrna, they are, they, uh, Smyrna is bitterness. They are bitter in their life. And they are somewhere at Pecamos, married to the world. They are somewhere at Theatira, in dark edges of their Christianity. They are somewhere at Satis, they have just escaped. But they have little strength, uh, they, they, they have no power to overcome some things. They are somewhat a uh, Philadelphia, which is the edge where God says, with the key of David, you open it and no man can shut. They are somewhat like you see, what is with rights when they are wrong, right? Um, the not with uh, meaning of the attire besides do, uh, continual sacrifice is dominating female. The edge is characterized by dominant force, a force that was ruthlessly invading and conquering all despotic and uh, controls and uh, a dominating female is the greatest case in the world so even so solomon says i find bitter than death a woman whose heart is nets and, and, and nets so a woman was not meant to have an iron disposition she's according to holy scripture to be submissive to the male uh, so she's commanded not to have iron disposition so who is this woman jezebel uh, the it's mystery Babylon. Jezebel, the prophetess, same as in the Bible, the identity of Jezebel, uh, who is now teaching and seducing the, spirit, the children of God to eat things, sacrifice to idol. So Theatira is the corrupt church, is the doctrine of Jezebel that God is against, is the church Jezebel's influence. So this Jezebel, when we take in the Old Testament, she's married to Ahab, she's God's, she kills God's prophets, she ordered Naboth's death, she practiced witchcraft according to 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 22, and the dogs ate her body and left her bones. She is a prophetess in the New Testament, a false teacher, an immoral woman in the mystery Babylon. So we find that Jezebel, first important thing that we learn about her, she's not a daughter of Abraham, no. Uh, is her induction to the tribes of Israel by spiritual admission, but uh, like, like, like Ruth and uh, the Moabite. She, she was a daughter of Ethbal, king of Sidon, according to First Kings chapter 16, verse 31, who was the priest of Astet. So she brought all the pagan things into Israel. Marrying the wrong person brings disaster and it makes you bend to that influence. So Ahab married Jezebel and did it just for political maneuver to strengthen his kingdom. So Jezebel is the type of the modern church. Of course, in this case, we apply to Catholic and Protestants joined together. Any church that is untrue to the word is a Jezebel system. It's a mystery Babylon. So the woman and their daughters, that's why the Bible says, I will kill your children with death. It says, now, listen, uh, quoting from my terrorology, the Roman Catholic Church uh, killed 68 million uh, 
uh, Christians in my theology. Uh, there's actually a museum of torture that they were using. So she was given a space to repent. If God gave Jezebel a space to repent, it means everyone has a chance to repent. Everyone has a time to come back to God, to repent of their evil ways, and to come back to the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and to be born again. So she did not repent. So God gives the final warning that uh, I will kill their children with death. And all the churches may know that I am he that searches the reins of the heart and I will give every man according to their work. So we find that the doctrine of Balaam, um, above all, it was the deliberate maneuver of the corrupt clergy to bind people to themselves, leading people deliberately into sin of unbelief. Nicolaitan doctrine uh, was the corrupt clergy um, as they sought political power among themselves, while Balaamism was the subjection of people to their system of creed and worship in order to hold them. So Nicolaitan system was the organization humanizing the leadership of the church, thereby disposing the spirit. So it was a human hierarchy instead of the Holy Spirit. Balaamism is denominationalism which takes the church manual instead of the Bible. And right to this hour, many people of God are caught in this snare of denominationalism and God is crying to them that, come out of here, my people, as to be partakers of your sin, that I may receive, you may not receive your plagues, so we see denominationalism is not of God. God, he, he, by one spirit we are born into the church of God, you cannot join it. So he says, I know your works and the last to be more than the first. So the saints of the Atara were, were the, the cream of the crop because even in the time of inquisition when they were bent, when they were persecuted, they could not give up their religion. The more they were persecuted, the more they served God. As a Christian, you should endure to the end. The more you suffer, you greatly toil and suffer as long as you walk close to him. However, there are two men uh, that were true in the uh, test of the word. That was uh, St. Patrick and Columba who could stand as the messengers. Then the Lord comes on Columba as the messenger of this age. St. Patrick was a very good man of God. Um, then uh, Columba was, was born uh, around 521 A.D. He had a life of miracles and his ministry was followed by the supernatural. He was a missionary. One time he approached the city and the gates were barred against him. He lifted his voice in prayer that God may intervene and allow him access in order to preach. As he prayed, the, the magicians started to harass him with loud noises. And they, they began to, he then began to sing psalms. As he sang, God increased his volume that he drowned that of the mag magicians. And the gates flung open. So we find these men were Holy Ghost filled and their churches were Holy Ghost filled and they were missionaries, God called men, backed up with signs and wonders following them. A ministry that was in power and demonstration. In another occasion, he was, he was shut out of a village where he wanted to preach. Then suddenly the chief's son became violently ill. They called him quickly to come and pray there. So we find Columba was the messenger to this, which is the longest church age. The, of the attire. He spread the gospel uh, all over in the island and uh, Scotland, preaching the word. One time he, 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 he was in a barren island which was very dry, but with one hand he was planting, with one hand he was praising God and praying, and it became one of the most fertile islands. I like this man because when I went to school from form one to form six, I was at St. Columbus, which is named after this man. Then the salutation um, in Revelation chapter 2 verse 18 says, These things saith the Son of God, who has eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass. So it means he sees all what we are passing through. He has piercing eyes that see everything. His eyes blaze with the fire of wrath and judgment. As he sees Apollo revered as Son of God, uh, when he alone is the only begotten of the Father. How awful must the judgment of the religion of the therapy when God is substituted instead of... Uh, this is the age where Mohammedanism started rising. When they denied the Son of God and determined death uh, upon the Christians. So the eulogy comes as, I know your works, your love, your service, your faith and your patience and thy works, the last to be more than the first. These are not fading Christians. I don't believe in Christians that fade, but a Christian goes stronger and stronger each day. Um, now the works will never take place of faith. God 
we are saved on our salvation is based on faith but works is your answer to the to, to what god has done so faith without works is dead so works is the answer of the faith it shows that your faith is allowed it's your response to what god has done to you i know your love your your faith your patience uh, you you will not note that their love is placed between works you will note that their love is between, placed between works and service and that is the right place because without love our works are not accepted before god neither is our service paul speaking to corinthians he says without love i'm nothing and whatsoever i do is without profit unless it is done by love so i know your way, your service jesus said he that is greatest of all must be servant of all and in james chapter 1 verse 3 says the trying of your faith worketh patience so when they were tried they came out like precious gold that's why even crisis feet are like a brass tried in the fire a christian must pass through all the temptations all the tests and endure all temptation it was in this age when the light glowed ever so faintly yet the few believers leapt more fervently as the darkness increased until towards the end of the age many arose attempting reforms this age paved the way for reformation as they stood against this antichrist system they stood against this woman jezebel whose children denominationalism well, she's a mother of many hallows right so denominationalism was starting coming out of the mother which is catholic so the word the attire is virus meaning well, one of them is continual sacrifice which which is the prophecy of the uh, how these believers were giving themselves to god when the stamp was left after dark ages it became a time of restoration or reformation making way for restoration because god says i will restore what the power when the king and when the locust and the caterpillar is eaten god is always going to restore whatever is stolen from your life god will restore the agenda of god in our life is to restore to bring you back to your ought to be condition to bring you back to it and again back to the stage of a perfect man back to what you are born to be to your purpose as a child of god he says i'll put upon you none other burden the word of the word for burden is weight or pressure the pressure of the dark ages was either to bend or to be broken to bow or to die it was inquisition the power of the empire backing up by by satan's worship organized or, or be organized or pay for your life each age and its pressures for example the great burden of the last age is the pressure for riches and soft living this is the age that we are living in it's the pressure for riches and soft living but we find that the bible is saying here in revelation 2 verse 24 that but i say unto you and unto the rest in the attire as many as have not this doctrine which have not known the depths of satan as, uh, as they speak i'll put no other burden so if you're not part of this system of the devil they, there is no other pattern. The pattern of afflictions or sicknesses or poverty or what is not supposed to be on you. You have only one legal pattern, which is the yoke of Christ, which is easy. It says, He that overcometh and keepeth my works to the end, um, uh, I will give him. There is a reward to the overcomer. If you overcome and keep the works to the end, it says, I'll give you the morning star to shine in darkness. You shall rule with a rod of iron, power over nations. That's what we shall rule in the millennium. So he's promising there's an incentive to every age, to the overcomer. To overcome, you are given power over nations. It means you'll be a, cap a strong and capable and bending ruler who can cope so powerfully with any situation. And that, that even the most desperate enemy will be broken if need be. So this shows the power that is given, the authority that is given to a child of God who is restored to his position in Christ because your position is linked to your possession. So this is the edge of the Atera. As we examine the places, um, we'll be picking up again tomorrow on the edge of Sardis. Then we pick up on the edge of Philadelphia and Laodicea. Then we start cruising chapter by chapter through the book of Revelation. This tour was an eye-opener because it makes you walk in the actual Bible places. So when we stand as Christians, as children of God, walking in the promises of God and promises become a reality. When you step into what you have believed, it's a great experience. God bless you. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson.
and the tour that is making this a reality that is giving us an experience of the ancient time and we believe today we have the ancient of days to give us an experience of the Holy Spirit and an experience of redemption power, redemption rights that we have. I pray Lord Father as we end this service, as we are plunging into the deeper study of the book of Revelation and soon we'll be starting chapter by chapter. May you inspire us, may you direct us, may you answer us, may you give us Lord Father a deeper insight of the divinely revealed mystery truths that will literally turn that's of the children to the fathers that will bring back, oh Lord Father, the reality of the scriptures. I pray again, Father, that those with requests, whatever they are, in whatever area of life they have them, I pray that you answer them in Jesus' name. Amen.